most of us are not fully aware of bulk data loading techniques in Snowflake. In the episode 7 of this tutorial series, we have briefly practiced data loading and data ingestion via Web UI as well as via SnowSQL CLI with named stages and with a small data set. However, what we have not seen is that how to utilize the user and the table unnamed stages without creating any external stage like S3 or Azure storage and analyze your data even if you have very limited privileges in your Snowflake Enterprise account and finish your data analysis super fast. We will see everything live, bulk data loading of different formats like CSV and Parquet besides best practices to speed up your data loading process. So if you have to surprise your team or your customer, stay tuned until the end of this live snowflake journey of data loading. Hello and a warm welcome to my channel Data Engineering Simplified and this snowflake video series a real jumpstart course for data professional. In the last 8 episode, we have already covered a lot about snowflake including its architecture, unique feature, web interface, snow site, container hierarchy, DDL, DML, snowflake objects and many more. This ninth episode will primarily focus on very rarely used unnamed stages and how you can speed up your data loading and data ingestion activities and start data profiling even without creating any single table. I hope you have been enjoying this visual guided tour on Snowflake. So let's start with chapter 9. So what is covered in this chapter? We will look into overview of data loading, understand stage concept internal and external stages. External stages are very popular but many of us do not know the internal as well as unnamed stages. Data loading features, data loading consideration and how to load data using the copy command. So these are the couple of important things. We'll go through them in detail. Before we go, let's review the course tree map. First, we will understand the concept of stage in Snowflake and this is one of the most important concept which is not really understood by many developer, even architect. Second, we will load data to internal unnamed stages. We will not use any external stage as that creates a dependency. Third, we will focus on copy command and how copy maintain history of the data load and play with important options like force load plus error dry run. We will see the concept of file format and how it works with delimited type file as well as variant data type. Fifth, we will cover how to query the stage using dollar notation and also query the semi structure files like parquet plus basic transformation which can be applied. We will cover how to use file pattern using regular expression to load file and run it via validation mode. We will have a quick run with a delimited versus semi structure data load including warehouse size. We will see how can you use the compression while loading the data and bring more effectiveness and save cost. Before we proceed further, I have a small announcement to make. If you really want to master a Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse, I would recommend you to look into my channel's playlist. The playlist section includes a SnowPro and Advanced Certification Guide, Mock Question Series, Important SQL Functions, a Snowflake Connector Series, a Snowflake Features and Limitations and many more real-life hands-on videos. By watching my free video series, many data engineers, leads and architects and even managers are getting certified in SnowPro Core and Advanced Certification and the success rate is very very high. I'm not lying. Just look into the comment. You don't need to buy any expensive courses. Just subscribe to my channel and I guarantee that you would easily learn this technology and get certified in just few weeks. So one small favor, if you are learning from my channel and my content, Please, please, please hit the like button and this gesture will make me super happy. Let's understand the stage concept in Snowflake. What is stage or staging area? Stages or staging area come from real world warehouses. You can see there are two loading unloading bays marked with yellow color. Stages or staging area are the place to put things temporarily before moving them to a more stable location. In the Snowflake context, there are tables where data need to be loaded. In many ETL projects, we have a stage location as FTP location where data is pushed by the source system and then we load them into a table via ETL job or any other integration mechanism. Staging area in the real world warehouse is a short term temporary location to keep the goods and after a while they are cleaned up and those goods are moved 
to permanent location or we can call them rack or a shelf and this is how the overall picture looks like we have the long term storage we have the staging area and on those staging area the trucks are delivering the goods from outside you can have multiple sources very similar to that a warehouse gets packages from multiple trucks and we can also have a multi level stages which are like directory as well as sub directory structure stage in the old school data warehouse middle stop between transactional database oltp and reporting database olap table data is loaded temporarily in the staging database from staging database data is then loaded into a reporting database since loading data from different sources is a network heavy and sometime io heavy operation they are generally separated from reporting databases sometime the speed of source system is slow and we don't want to disturb the performance of a reporting system and that's why this staging concept comes into the picture snowflake has four type of stages let's go through them one by one so first comes your user stage and the second comes table stage every individual user in snowflake has got a user stage and that stage is created by default like a unix system you can access that stage with tilde sign so if you say list at the rate tilde sign you would be able to see your stage likewise we have a table stage and table stage is also created as soon as a table is created within snowflake environment to access the table stage you have to use at the rate dollar sign followed by the table name so this is how these two stages are accessed they are also called unnamed stages and you cannot change you cannot drop these stages it is by default created along with the user object as well as table object next is named internal stages and we have named external stages we have seen this in our previous episode as we know the unnamed stages are created automatically and you don't need to do any setup not viewable as object on stage tab from your web ui you must specify certain file format like parameters as a part of the command during each copy into event on the other side these named stages are definable via web ui they are more flexible than the table as well as user stages viewable as a object on stage tab of database area of web ui have embedded default file format definition or you can specify the named file format for use and we would really see when we get into the live demo so getting file into and out of stages use put command to load files into any type of stage use copy into command to move files from any stage into a table use copy into command to unload files from tables and put them into any kind of stages and this is very important thing most of us always wait for internal or external stages to be created which is rather more permission driven however the user stage is as good as your internal stage only thing is that it doesn't have a name and it has a certain restrictions and during the live demo we would really see how you can use huge amount of data in your table stage or in your user stage without waiting for any permission one important thing to note the put command cannot be run from web ui worksheet if you are running a put command or a get command you have to get into the snow sql cli provided by snowflake another important thing to notice your snowflake instance might be running on aws or azure however you can make other cloud object storage as your stage securely integrate and consume data from there there could be some network charges associated with the data transfer and that is one of the important thing we have to keep it in mind and that's why don't assume that since your snowflake is running on aws doesn't mean that you cannot consume data from azure or a gcp right now snowflake support all these three major clouds as a object storage and you can have the integration with them so let's see everything live let's go through the first part where we try to see the user stage table stage and try to list them so first we'll focus on how to list the user object as we have seen the user object is represented by the tilde sign i can use this sql command called list followed by at the rate sign and followed by tilde if you have to list any stage you have to use the at the rate sign followed by what kind of stage named or unnamed stage so let me run this sql for you that all the files which are available in my stages are listed here all the worksheet which you have created in your web ui are also stored within the user object 
and this is how we can see and it also has a metadata for your worksheet like what is the context we have set so when you come to that worksheet again this metadata helps to understand what context to set few important thing to notice so user stage is created for all user automatically and there is no storage limit so far i have not found any storage limit with the user stage nobody else can access this stage location so it is completely private to individual user even account admin or a security admin cannot access your user stage all your worksheet are stored there including your worksheet metadata we have seen this stage cannot be associated with any file format like csv and parquet so you cannot define that this user stage is associated with the file format parquet or a csv or any other file format that is one of the limitation as administrator you can see the stage size but you cannot see the location that is one of the biggest drawback so you don't know as an account admin or as a snowflake instance admin if you need to know which user is occupying that much of space within their user stages even with snowflake account views like stages stage storage usage history or storage usage do not give any hint about the total space taken by the user stage you don't need any special permission as this stage is created for every individual user you can load data from snow sql cli to this location using put command and along with dollar sign tilde under the hood snowflake uses cloud object storage to store all data and files within the user stage location most of the developer expect a stage to be made available and they don't use this location for storage and that is one of the interesting thing like i personally use a lot of data into the stage object and i don't need any special external stage or a named stage for me to go ahead with my analysis so we have seen user object now let's get into the table stage object so every table when it is created snowflake automatically create a unnamed table stage object so i already have a customer table so if i have to get the data within the customer stage i have to use at the rate sign followed by percentage sign followed by the name of the table you can give a fully qualified name if your context is already set then you can simply give the name of the table and let me run this sql for you right now i do not have any data available under the customer so table stage is created for all table automatically and no storage limit again only the owner of the table can access this stage so if you have created a table for yourself or if you have a table creation privileges you can always store a data within the table stage if you have created a table you can load any amount of data to this table stage this stage cannot be associated with any file format like csv or a parquet so this is one of the limitation to execute query on this stage you can associate format with table as administrator you can see the stage size but you cannot see this table stage biggest drawback even with snowflake account tables like stages stage storage user history and storage usage do not give any hint about the stage size you can load data from snow sql cli to this location using put command and using at the rate percentage table name under the hood snowflake uses cloud object storage to store all data most of the developer expect a stage to be made available and they don't use this table storage so if you don't have access to any named stage you can always use either table stage or a user stage let's see how to list the named stages we have already seen that earlier so you can use a command called show stages and it will show all the stages you have within your context so i have six stages all the stages are loaded here and this is how it looks like couple of important thing if you have external named stage it will come like this and you can see that it has a credential and it will also show whether it is external stage or what kind of cloud is being used so this is very important command and you can run this command to understand how many stages are available within your schema if you have to list a particular stage in this case stg01 so you can say list at the rate stg01 you don't have to use tilde sign or you don't have to use a percentage like we have used for table and user stage and this is how all my data looks like so you can see i have a total 254 item available and they are classified under a different directory as sub directory how can i create a internal stage so internal stage when i say internal stage the internal stage uses the underlying cloud storage without your knowledge so i am going to create a stage called stage 03 and it's a pretty simple straightforward you can say create or create or replace a stage 
followed by database name, followed by schema name and the name of the stage, which must be unique within this context. You can give a comment. Let me run this. So my stage three created successfully. And if I want to see the definition of stages, I can say show stages like this. So it shows a stages like stage zero three is created, which is under this database and this is schema and it is internal stage and there is no cloud information available. So this is how you can see the user stage, table stage, named stages, and this is how you can list the stages. So let's see how to load the data to the different stages using the put command. We have already seen how to load data using the web UI, but this time we will see how to load different kinds of file formats under different stages and how to create folder, subfolder and how to remove stages and save the storage cost. Before I really load any data, let me see how many stage files are there in my user stage. So I can use the list SQL construct. And here I got total 15 rows, which comprises some of the files under a different folder, but most of them are worksheet. Now I can use the remove SQL construct to remove any file and which I can do using remove construct. So I have removed this CH09 folder. It is again a namespace and now I can list all the stages. So I can see I have only 14 rows. So 14 worksheets are there. One important thing is that your worksheet will have a name, but this name is not visible in this worksheet data. This name must be available in the metadata. If you really want to see this file, you won't be able to see the actual data inside the metadata file because these are all encrypted and it is not visible or readable. Now let's put some data and let me explain you how the put construct looks like. So you have to go to SnowSQL CLI and you have to connect to your Snowflake instance. And here you have to give your put command followed by the file name, whether you are in a Unix machine or a Windows machine. And then you can use at the rate tilde sign followed by you can directly place under the root folder or you can give the name of the folder under which you want to place the file. So here I am trying to copy test.csv under a folder called ch09. So let me run this command. So I have a test file under uh, the data folder and I'm going to put this file to my user stage. It clearly shows that the source test CSV has moved to the target with the name test.csv and it automatically compressed with gzip and the source size is 512 but the target size is 288 and uh, the source compression is none but the target compression is gzip and I would like to list the stage location. So here it listed that this particular file has been loaded. It's not that you can always upload only a CSV file or a Parquet file or a Warsi file. You can actually upload anything. You can really use the Snowflake's stage environment as a storage location. And let me try with another mm -hmm. HTML file. This time I'm going to put an HTML file and I'm going to specify auto compress equals to false. So when it is uploaded, it will not be compressed. So let me go back to my CLI console and try that out. So again, my HTML file is loaded and you can see the size of both the files are exactly same because there is no target compression applied. And here you can see the clear difference. It is gzip and this file has loaded as usual. So this is how I can load the data in my user stages. And you really don't have to worry about the size and compression of anything. You have all the control given by Snowflake. In general, when we use a show command or we try to list uh, files, we use a like statement. However, when you are using a list, you cannot use a like statement. You have to use a pattern. So let's see how the pattern works. So I can give a syntax list at the rate tilde sign followed by the pattern. So I can run this single command and it will bring only those files which has a name test. I can try with another regular expression. And here only those files are visible, which ends with gzip. And if I want to search only HTML files, I can use this pattern and I can list all the HTML files. So this is how the pattern syntax looks along with the list command. Now how to place the file under the table stages. And uh, it is exactly the same command. Only difference is here. Instead of using tilde, I can use a percentage sign followed by the name of the table. Make sure that before you place the files within the 
stable stages you have to use the right context when i say context it has to be the right database and the right schema i am already in my ch09 schema so i am simply copying this statement and going back to my snow sql cli and run it so i already have a customer table it has loaded game data under my customer table stage let's go back to the web ui and try to list the customer table stage here i can see my test csv gzip is available i can again follow a pattern and i can really i can go under the ca09 folder if i do that let's see what result does it bring it brings exactly the same result there's no difference only thing is that uh, if you have specified the namespace it will only bring all the data within that however the result will look exactly same so this is how we can load the data under the table stages now how to load the data under a normal named stages we have seen how to load the data in the unnamed stages user as well as table now let's see how to load the data in the named stages so first let me see what is the files available in my stage stg01 so i don't have any file available perfectly fine uh, i can go and i can run this put command and i will try to load the same data set within my stage 01 which is a named internal stages so again and i loaded the data from my local system to the stage environment let me go back to my web ui so this is how i loaded the data into my named internal stages so we have seen how to load the data under internal named stage table stage as well as user stage now how to remove the stages or the files from the stages since stages are temp storage it must be removed after the files are moved to the permanent location sql syntax is pretty straightforward i can simply write a keyword called removed followed by the stage location whether it is user table or any named stage and that is how i can do that so let me run this command for you it says that these two items are removed successfully if i go and remove the from the customer i can simply try that out following command will remove all the data inside the customer table stage so let me run this command for you so it says that it has really executed the query one important thing is that remove at the rate percentage customer is not equivalent to drop the stage customer so as we have learned the table stages as well as user stages are created by snowflake and it does not allow you to drop it okay it will be dropped automatically if the table is dropped okay so if you drop the table all the files within the stage will be dropped automatically if you want to drop a percentage customer which is a table stage snowflake doesn't allow let's try that so it says that this is unexpected because this syntax is not understood by the snowflake okay if i remove this it will be more meaningful even though there is no such customer stage but this stage exists so this is how it works now if i have to drop this stage if this stage exists i can simply run this and since it doesn't exist uh, it it complains so if you have to see the stage and stage history cost you can use the snowflake usage table and for that you have to go to the account user schema and stage views let me show you so now i change my role to the account admin because account admin is the only role which can see the snowflake account usage views and here i have a copy history and i have the load history and also i have stages and stages store history so if you go to this table and you can click on a preview data it will show you all the stages and uh, you know the st stages related detail whether it is in internal named and everything so this is how you can use the stages storage usage and stage storage history one important thing you cannot load data to the external named stages so we have seen how we can load the data to the internal stages but we cannot load the data to the external stages so you can create external named stages with azure aws and gcp and i have already created let me first list and show that stage so i am trying to list my stage so this is a s3 stage let me list how many files it has so it has so many files okay i am going to put a file in this external stage and let's see what happens so it complains saying that commands are not supported with external stage so the put command is not applicable for external stage this is how the put command works wherefore snow sql allow you to 
put the data into the different stages. Jump into the next topic, copy and copy history. We'll try to load the data to a stage and from stage, we'll try to copy the data to the table. So let's load and query the data from the table stage first, and then we can see the data directly into the table. So the table stage are unnamed stages in the sense it doesn't have a name and it is directly associated with your table. It cannot be modified. We have seen it is also hard to associate a file format with it. It is easy to work with CSV, but it is a little hard to work with the semi structure data. So for this tutorial, I have taken a semi structure data, which is a parquet because CSV is a pretty easy. So we are creating a parquet table called customer parquet FF and it has only one field variant because all the semi structure data type should be represented by variant type. So I'm creating and replacing one important thing. What I have done it while creating the table, I am associating a file format type, which is a parquet. If you do not use this particular statement, it would be hard to query the parquet file from the stage location, especially for the unnamed one for the named one. It is pretty straightforward. But for unnamed one, it is a little hard to do. That's what I have taken this example. So let me create this table. So I have created this table. The table is created successfully. Now I am going to put a parquet file inside the table stage. Let me run this command. So I loaded my data. Now first list whether this data is available here or not. So the data is available. Now, if I have to query the data without loading the data into a table, I have to use the dollar notation. So how can I use the dollar notation for any semi structure data? Dollar one is the only way to access all the column because dollar one is the only column and you have to use the dollar one followed by semicolon and the name of the field and you can typecast to the necessary field type along with that snowflake also gives two different attributes and that is called a metadata you can bring the name of the file and the row number right so here is a syntax i can write select metadata dollar file name metadata dollar row number and followed by dollar one customer key name address country key phone account balance market segment and comment and i am directly querying the stage location i am not querying the table and how you can see that i am saying at the rate percentage customer parquet ff which is the name of the table and if i run this query i got 10000 rows as a result and here this is the name of the file through which the data has been read and each of the row item is showing a line number right so this is how the overall query works if you want to see the result without loading the stage data into table. One more important thing, I can also apply some basic transformation here. This is how you can write a query into a stage file, which is not a CSV file and uh, without loading the data even into the table. And if you are having the stage in your table location, then you have to associate the file format directly to the table definition. If you remove this syntax, then this following query will end up with error. So make sure that you understand this overall concept of uh, querying stage table, specifically when it is in a user location as well as in table location. And while loading the data, you can also specify uh, date or month or etc. And automatically it will create a partition kind of uh, stuff. And while performing a query, you can also use pattern. So some of the important thing, Parquet file format has only one column called dollar one. So we have seen in other cases that we can use dollar one, dollar two, dollar three, because it takes the Unix style of uh, understanding the position of a field. But for a parquet, it is always dollar one. If you have loaded multiple files, the metadata dollar file name will change wherever it is pulling the data from along with the row number. If you remove the stage definition from the table, the above query will not work. So you have to really associate your table with a stage definition. And even if you have the file format properties available with the table, it will not work. Now, once you have validated your data and it looks perfectly fine, you can really run the copy command and copy command automatically work because we have already associated the file format with the table definition. So let me run this SQL statement. So it says that pick the file called customer.snappy.pake. It has loaded its status says perfectly fine. It has passed 10,000 rows. It has loaded 10,000 rows. Now I'm going to query this table. And if I query this table, 
it shows all the 10,000 rows as a JSON format because it is a parquet data and our field is all about variant column. So now your data has been loaded successfully. But what if you have to load the same data again and again? It will not allow you to load the data by default because copy plus table have a metadata which remembers how many data files have been loaded in last 64 days. So it is maintained in this load history table and in the copy plus table metadata. And if you really have to load the data again because you dropped or you truncated the table, you have to use the syntax called force true and false. That way you can load the data. By default, the force is equals to false because it does not want you to mistakenly duplicate your data. As we know that Snowflake does not support any kind of constraint. So it will allow you to load the duplicate data. And that's why this particular parameters by default set to false. If I run this command without this, it will not load the data. Let me try. So it says that copy executed, but nothing has been loaded. Now I am setting this attribute to true and let me rerun it. My data has been loaded. So this is how I can reload the data. So I have 20,000 rows in the sense first 10,000 and the second 10,000, they are exactly same. So this is how you can use different parameters while copying the data. You can also use some kind of basic transformations to load the data. And that is how the overall stuff works. So you can run the copy command from user stage, table stage, named stage, and all works exactly same way. There is no difference. Now let's see the account usage. And for that, you have to switch to the account admin role. And if I try to run this command because I want to understand the copy history. So copy history will tell me from where the data has been loaded. What is the file size? If you do not see the name of the stage, what it means that it has been loaded through the web UI and that is how it looks. And that's why this user internal user stage comes into the picture because it uses some kind of mechanism. And once it is done, it actually remove the data file. So this is how this particular copy history work. There are another view which is called load history. Let me run that. So it also shows almost the same thing. The only difference is that the copy history also shows the pipe related copy and load history shows all the load. So it shows how many rows are passed, how many rows are loaded and any error limit and everything. So this is how these two views can be used. And if you really want to see the daily stage space, you can run this command. And you want to see all these stages. So this is how all the stages are visible. Unfortunately, the unnamed stages are not visible here. This is how we can query the data, even though it has not been loaded to the table. We can really use a dollar notation to query the stage, whether it is internal stage, unnamed stage or a named stage. And we can also go to the copy history and the load history to see how the copy command has been executed. And we can reload the data with the force flag. Now quickly talk about copy and the file format. We have already seen how the copy command works, but now we will try to use a copy command with file format. So we'll understand the file format and option and quickly run a copy command. So let's create a file format in a simplest manner. We can also do it through the database tab, but I'm going to create it through the SQL. So I'm going to create three file formats called my parquet file format, my JSON file format and my CSV file format. So syntax is pretty straightforward and simple. So this is how I created it. If you want to list it. And this is how you can see all the file formats. It's a pretty straightforward stuff. And uh, here the definitions are also stored, rest of the options. Now, once your file format is created, you can really specify different options. And if you're not comfortable with the options, I would suggest you to go to the database tab and create the file format and look into the SQL script. Now, once my file format is created, I can associate that file format with my stage. I'm going to create a stage called stage CSV and I'm going to associate a file format called my CSV file format. I can run this SQL. My stage is created successfully and the file format is associated with it. Perfectly fine. Now you can also create a stage without associating a file format. So I created something called STG none. In this case, file format is not attached. And when I use a copy command, I can give and specify the file format separately. Now, these are the important things. When you really want to force a certain type of file format in the stages, 
you can make sure that during the design of your application or a data project you associate the file format and if you are not sure what kind of file i'm going to dump it whether it is parquet csv json xml you can make sure that is a very generic stage and do not associate any file format because it can be discovered during the copy command so this is how the purpose of associating a file format with table stage or not associating the file format with any one of them. Let me put some CSV data into the customer table, which we have seen earlier, and I'm going to make the auto compress false for a simplicity. So I moved one data file to the STG CSV stage, which has a format associated with it. And I'm going to move another same file under non-format. Let me list my stage. So we see we have the data available in both the stages. Okay. And if I have to run a copy command without making my syntax more complex, I can really run a copy command saying that copy into customer CSV FF from STG CSV because STG CSV has a file format attached. So before that I would like to run, now it executed successfully without any issue and it has loaded thousand rows, perfectly fine. Let me run the select statement. And this is how it looks like. So it has loaded all the thousand rows without any complex SQL statement. Now, if I have to load the data from the stage where the file format is not defined, in that case, I have to use a different syntax and I have to use file format and the name of the file format is my CSV file format. So I don't have any rows. Now I am loading the data from STG none and it will load all the file because I have not specified any file name. So let me run it. Again, thousand rows got loaded. So this is how you can use the copy command and load the data specifying a stage name with file format. You can load any kind of data to any table. So query the stage location. We have already seen in the previous section that how to query a stage location, which is a table stage. But now let's see how you can query the stage named stage when it has a parquet data the way we have seen because most of the project uses the parquet format and how you can apply your basic transformations to load the data to your table. I'm going to create a table called my customer for this example. The table is created successfully. Let's query it. I don't have any data set in this. Okay. I'm going to create a file format called parquet file format and by defining this attribute type equals to parquet. So my file format is created successfully. Now let's create a stage object, which is a named internal stage object. So, and here I am associating the file format directly with the stage object. So I don't have to write a complex SQL statement. So my stage object is created and it has a file format associated with it. Now let me put some data to this location and what I'm doing it, I'm creating a subdirectory called my stage followed by my data. And that's how I can create a many subdirectories for my CDC, for my history load, for my archival load and anything. So I'm using the same customer snappy data set, which has quite a lot of 10,000 rows. Here you see my data is loaded successfully. I can see my data is available in my named internal stage. If I have to query this data, right, without loading, what I have to do, as we discussed that Parquet always uses $1 notation. It does not have a $2, $3, $4. So if I have to write a query, I use $1 followed by name of the column and then I can type cast it. So this is how my query looks like. And since my stage is already having a Parquet file format associated with it, it works pretty straightforward. And my entire semi-structure data looking like a structure table. Okay. Now, if I, in the earlier version, what we have seen, we have seen that we have a variant column, a single column. And when we run the copy command, the entire variant column, more like a JSON structure are visible to us. So we cannot, it, it becomes a very complex query if I have to really pass that data every time. In this case, what we'll do, we will use the basic transformations and we'll really load the data into an individual column. So here I can really use function called substring or two decimal, or I can even use a sequence value. So let me use a sequence value. I'm creating a sequence value here. So this sequence is start with one. And whenever I will call the next value, it will increment by one. 
Now we can use a basic transformation, if not all the transformation with a stitch. So I am going to use this and it will result you the substring and different kind of transformation can be used and you can see the next value is also generated automatically. I can use the copy command or I can use the insert with select statement to load the data from my stage to the appropriate table. So this is how I can really use the basic transformation and the dollar notation to query the table and load the data. Now let's look into the pattern loading and validation mode. We will see how to apply a file pattern and how to run a copy command using validation mode. So let me show you some examples. So following kind of file pattern can be used to copy data to these stages. It is possible that you have a lot of data available under your stage within directory and a subdirectory. And if you have to load a specific file, you can specify the table name followed by the stage name and you can also specify the specific file name within the stage. I am copying into the table T1 from my table stage and within the table stage I have a subdirectory and within the subdirectory I want to load only and I want to load only my data 1 and my data 2 CSV files. In the same way I can also use regular expressions if I know that I want to load a specific file ending with 1 to 3 and start with 0 to 9 so I can also use a pattern. So here I am using files as an attribute and here I am using pattern as an attribute and I am giving the regular expression. So this is what the two ways of loading the data and whether it is your table stage, whether it is your named stage, you can really apply the files and pattern in both the cases. So let's try that out. So I'm going to create a table called my customer CSV. Now my table is created successfully. I am going to create file format called CSV underscore FF and I'm going to give the my field optional enclosed with double code. You can give double code or you can give this number. File format is also created. Now I'm going to create a stage called my stage and I'm going to associate this file format with this stage. You have seen this earlier. So I have created my table, I have created my file format, I have created my stages. Perfectly fine. Now I'm going to load some sample data within that stage. So I have a lot of files and all the files are loaded within the stage environment. Let me run the list command. So I'm able to see all my data within my stage and within subfolder my data and I have all the CSV file available. Now before I really, before I really load the data into my table, let me use the dollar notation to see the data. Since the stage is already having the CSV file as a file format, I don't have to specify the file format. In the case of Parquet, we have seen that everything is start with a $1. In case of a CSV file, you don't have to worry about $1. You can really give $1 to $8 because I have an 8 field in my table. So let me run this select statement on my external stage and I'm specifically looking one single file. So my data is being parsed and I'm able to see all the data. So this is how I can run my query on the external stage without even creating any table. Now I'm going to run and I'm going to load only customer 000 and customer 101 CSV file. And this is how I can use the specific file to load the data from my stage. So I don't have any data set. The two CSV file data got loaded. So I should have 2000 record. Let's say that I want to use regular expression and I want to load all the CSV file starting with a customer underscore one zero and it ends with uh, zero to nine. How many such files will be there? We can see. So with one, two, so these two files will be filtered and they would be considered for data loading. So here I can see one zero two and one zero three. These files are having around thousand rows each and that is how the data loaded. So I must have total 4,000 rows in my table. Now there might be cases where you really want to see whether the CSV file or the file which you're trying to load is having a right data set or not. For that, Snowflake gives something called validation mode. And if there is a problem in the data, then it will return all the error rows. And this is just a dry run. You, it will not load the data into your table, but it will give you the error with all those invalid rows. Let's run that. 
So I have created a file called customer 403 underscore error dot CSV. It is having all the error record. It means that when, when the CSV parser is trying to parse stage five, it fails to parse. And this is how the result appears. So what it says that it is trying to process this row, line number two, three, four, five, and these are the errors. And you can click on that and it will give you the exact reason for not able to load this particular row. There are a lot more options available with copy command and you can refer this Snowflake documentation. This is just a simple example how you can really perform a dry run. Now it is also possible that without loading the data, you want to see the first 10 rows, how does it look like? We have performed the query on the stage location and this is another way that you can really validate the data before loading it. So we call it dry run. So instead of validation mode equals to return errors, I would say validation mode equals to return 10 rows. You can write 20 rows, two rows, three rows. So let's run this. So it will show exactly the 10 record. First 10 record looks good or not. If I want to make it 100, let's see. So it will show the first 100 records. So this is how you can validate uh, the data set from your stage file without even loading the data. Now let's talk about the loading performance. When we use the copy command to load the data from stage to permanent table, which format or the compression really works fast and whether warehouse size really matters or not. If you have to run an ETL or if you have to load a lot of data, what type of size is really recommended for you and how would you choose that? So let's see that how this overall load performance factor works in Snowflake. So I have created a couple of warehouses and they are going to load the same data set. So data set is available with, uh, without compression in a CSV format with compression and the same data set, same number of rows are available with Parquet without compression and with snappy compression. We will also see how the warehouse size really matters. For this four simulations, I am going to take a medium warehouse size. However, to load the same amount of data, we want to see how the warehouse size really makes a difference. Right. So I am in my worksheet again. I'm going to load a CSV file via copy command and I'm going to use a specific warehouse called CSV none virtual warehouse of size medium. So let me choose this. I have selected my warehouse. So you can see that my warehouse is this and I can first resume the warehouse. So I don't have to spend time starting the warehouse. So my warehouse is on. So let me drop this table before I really load the data. Let me create this table quickly. So let's see how many record does it have. So it has zero record. So I already have the data available. Let's list the data first. So you see I have a 423 rows available, that many files are available or each CSV file is close to 64 MB of size. Okay. Um, so now I'm going to run the copy command and I'm going to have this virtual warehouse which is already running. This virtual warehouse will load the data from my stage environment to table. And this is the command I'm using copy into customer performance CSV none which is no compressed and from this stage location and this is a file type right. Uh, let's see how much time does it take. So it took roughly 35.56 second to load the data on 185 millisecond for compilation and around 35.38 second for execution. So this is the time. Okay, let's do the same exercise by loading a compressed CSV file. So this time I'm going to use a different warehouse. So for this worksheet, I'm choosing CSV GZIP virtual warehouse medium size. I just want to make sure that we are having a different compute. So I can have the appropriate comparison of the data load without compression and with compression. So my warehouse is now resumed and let me drop this table. So the name of the table is called CSV underscore gzip. So I have zero rows in this table. Now let's run the copy command and this copy command will copy the data into the CSV underscore gzip from this location. And before I run the copy command, let's see how many files we have it. So I have 189 files. All of them are having exactly 64 MB size. So the number of files are relatively less. So hope it would take lesser time and let's try that out. So it clearly shows that 189 rows loaded 
and it took around 132 milliseconds for the compilation relatively less compared to 182 and it also took the same amount of time 35.39 seconds so there is not a much big difference between whether you load the compressed uh, data or whether you load a non-compressed data let's see how many rows it loaded so we have around 15 million rows here and in this case also we have 15 million rows loaded okay so in the both the cases the same data set i have made it available in csv format one is without compressed another is with gzip compress now same data set i'm going to load through the parquet format this time i'm going to use a warehouse called parquet none virtual warehouse of the same size i'm going to drop the table so let me see how many records we have it we don't have any record let's understand how many files are there in my stage location so i have close to 447 files available and mm, they are not compressed with the snappy now i am going to execute this select statement to run the copy command because if i have to load the data in individual column i have to really expand it so we have seen this earlier how to use a dollar one approach to extract the information and load the data so here my data type is parquet and compression is none and let's run this command so here i can see that it took 250 milliseconds for a compilation because we have this dollar one notation followed by it took roughly 30.48 seconds to load the entire data set okay let's see what is the total data size so it loaded exactly the 15 million record now let's try to see the last one where we are going to load the same amount of data and it is a snappy compression so this time we are going to use a warehouse called parquet snappy virtual warehouse medium okay and first let me drop this table and recreate it so i don't have any data available in this table let's list the stage files so i have 247 because it is compressed data okay uh, now I'm going to run the same command and this time I'm going to use the snappy stage environment and let me fix it. Okay, so I'm going to load all the data set from my snappy location to the table. So here it took 120 millisecond to compile the data set and 24.48 uh, seconds to load the entire data. So this looks slightly better than the previous three runs. How many records are there so we have exactly 15 million rows let's get into the history tab and see so what we have seen we have used different warehouses for each of these cases and all the warehouse size is exactly same for snappy compression it has actually scanned 11.9 gb of data However, in other cases, it has used a slightly more data set, right? Okay. Uh, so what I see, the best loading duration is for snappy parquet compression. Okay. In all the cases, it has loaded 150 milli million rows. Okay. So I am just comparing this 150 million rows data set. And if you look into the data side by side, your parquet snappy compression works best for a copy. However, Snowflake says that if you have to load the data, use the csv or csv with uh, gzip so i hope this gives a clear picture that what kind of file format you have to use if you have to speed up your data loading and minimize the cost now let's assume that i have the same data set and i want to load the data set by changing my warehouse size so for this experiment we are going to use three different warehouses one warehouse is called four node warehouse which is a mid-size what we have used for other simulation and we have eight node large warehouse and we have 16 node extra large warehouse so every time i am changing my warehouse it is doubling the number of nodes within the cluster right okay and rest of the definitions are exactly same we don't have any problem okay now let's go back to the worksheet and start simulating that if i load the same data set what we have used how much time does it take so now let's create a table called customer 4 node, customer 8 node and customer 16 node and we will perform the same thing by choosing the different warehouses. So let me quickly create a table called customer 4 node. Next is customer 8 node.
let's see the number of record in this table so i have zero record for customer four node zero record for customer eight node zero record for customer 16 node i am just specifying this prefix so it is very easy for me to validate that okay i am just altering the tag okay now i'm going to use virtual warehouse with four node which is a mid size cluster and i am first time listing the data set here so i have exactly 427 records are available okay with snappy compression okay perfectly fine and i'm going to perform the copy command and it is going to use the four node cluster and here i can see my four node cluster is on oh, perfectly fine now i am going to perform this copy command let's see how does it work so it took 45.64 second and out of that 145 millisecond for compilation and 45.5 second for loading the data and let's validate how many record does it have so it has roughly 300 million rows now let's use the eight node cluster which is a large warehouse i want to make sure that this warehouse is not suspended so this warehouse is on and i'm going to load the same data set from the same stage area and uh, to the customer eight node so i'm using a different table but i am using a different cluster also so this time i can see my data is loaded uh, in less time and it took the same time around 140 millisecond for a compilation it took 24.39 seconds to copy the data so it is the double the size the faster the data loading speed let's see how much data is loaded so it has loaded the same amount of data perfectly fine now i am changing my warehouse size to the 16 node extra large let's make sure that it is not suspended so the cluster is on and i'm going to run the same command but this time the data is loaded in the 60 node customer table so it took 14.81 second to load the data 78 millisecond for the compilation probably uh, the cloud layer already knows how to compile this particular query because the query is being repetitive uh, and it has it might have some intelligence to parse it and it took 14.73 seconds to load the data and execute the copy command so fantastic let's validate the data size so exactly the same number and let's go to the query history so when i see these three entries where i have the 16 node 8 node and 4 node servers and let's see how the result looks side by side so all of them have read the same amount of data but if you see the total duration it has really reduced okay and it has loaded around 300 million rows so snowflake is super fast loading the data 300 million rows took just 12.7 second with the extra large server 22.5 second with the uh, large server and 43.9 second with the medium server so this is a you know, good comparison and this gives you a clear picture that if, if you use a bigger warehouse and which has a more node your data loading would be faster right at the same time it will cost you more because bigger the cluster size more the cost however if you are trying to meet certain sla make sure that you have the right size for the warehouse and you can really do this tuning by changing your warehouse and understand that how much time does it take now you must be thinking how to load data in continuous manner and what feature of a snowflake helps to do that there are a lot more interesting things when it comes to continuous data loading and there we get into a serverless computing in a snowflake so watch this next video